theswirlworld.com podcast episode 120. The Swirl World. Interracial. Diverse. Beautiful. Today's shout out goes to speaking coach extraordinaire Amber Wright of Talk to Amber.com. Amber says that life is all about making connections and turning them into relationships. She believes these relationships come to life when you start having the right conversations. If you're ready to begin a speaking career or just want to become more confident in your public speaking abilities, then Amber is the person you need to contact. Visit her website at talktoamber.com. And now, on to today's show. Keep listening. Hello, Stacey Ann. How are you today? I'm good. Thanks so much for having me, Adrian. How are you? I'm doing well. Listen, you're going to be new to some of our listeners, so give us a little bit about yourself. Okay. Well, my name is Stacey Ann Gooden. I'm originally from Jamaica. I came here when I was very young. So I grew up here in the States. I am a meteorologist and a blogger, writer, if you will, here in New York City. But I'm also a wife and mom. A lot of people know me from the TV world because I've been in the industry for, I don't know, it's like been over 15 years now, I think. Oh, my gosh. (laughs) But who's counting, right? (laughs) That's right. Yeah, right. I started as a traffic reporter. I did some feature reporting, environmental reporting, but my expertise now is weather, so you can find me forecasting the weather here in New York. In addition to developing a passion for news and weather, I've developed a passion for blogging. So my blog is weatherankobama.com. I blog about my multiracial, multicultural family. Uh, My husband and I, we have two beautiful biracial children. They're ages six and three, girl, boy, respectively. My family and I, we also have this YouTube channel, Weather Anchor Mama. It kind of started off as me just, you know, sharing some beauty tips and whatnot, but it's evolved into something more, just documenting my journey as a mom. My husband and I, we do this couple's chat. We recently did a Ancestry DNA reveal, and we broke it all down, our background, and it went viral pretty much. My daughter and I, we do this curly hairstyle tutorial that we do. We try to do it every week. It started from teaching her how to embrace her curls because she came home one day, she was about three years old, and she was crying. She wanted straight hair. And I said, you know, love your hair. You know, the the struggle is real in the black community with, with our hair. So I didn't want her to develop this thing where she doesn't like her curls and she wants to straighten her hair and there's this constant battle. So we decided to do these fun curly hairstyles and she saw how pretty her hair looked. Um, My son, he likes to do like some toy videos and things like that. So every once in a while, we'll kind of have him just go crazy with his Thomas the Train and I also did a hair tutorial uh, with him as well. So, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it regarding the channel. It's been doing very well. I'm very shocked <laughs> in a great way sure, at how sure. well it's taken off. So definitely check it out. It's uh, Weather Anchor Mama on YouTube as well. Okay. Well, you know, the one thing that I, I appreciate that you're saying, one of the things about the hair, the struggle is real. And one of the things we should embrace is whatever kind of hair we have, because yeah. as uh, black women or as black people because we are so diverse in our genetic pool. You know, we come from the beautiful, darkest, darkest ebony to the very fair. Our, not only are our skin colors different, mm-hmm. our hair textures are different. It is what it is, so you should just enjoy what you have. And I'm glad that we are beginning to focus on and telling our, not only telling our daughters that their hair is mm-hmm. beautiful regardless of its texture, but explaining to our sons that that lady's hair or that girl's hair is beautiful regardless. You know, you have to also teach the men to appreciate it also. Which, you know what? Oh, oh yeah. I don't like to make blanket statements. So let me just make some observations that I have had working on my page and stuff. It seems that 
non-black men, and, and this is not a put down to black men, and I want that to be made clear, but I'm just saying non-black men for some reason seem to get it when it comes to the hair. They seem to really appreciate it. They seem to really love the, the kinkiness, the curliness, or whatever it is, because most of the pictures that I share, or a lot of the pictures I share with the couples, those those ladies are not only beautiful, they are curvy, and they have crop hair or short hair or real curly hair. And the only thing the guy can seem to say is how beautiful she is. And that's very appreciative. And, and that's just something that I've noticed. I'm wondering if you've noticed anything like that. Yeah, I mean, you know, I. it's funny because when I was a kid, I remember my mom having relaxed hair. And that's all I kind of saw growing up. My aunts had relaxed hair. And so as a little black girl, <laughs> I remember she would just shiny butt my hair because I'm from Jamaica, so we shiny butt my hair. Right now they call it Bantu knots. I think that's a more appropriate term okay. for it. Okay. Um, but that's what we called it growing up. And I hated it. I did not like it. I wanted straight hair. And I'm like, because you have straight hair. Why can't I have straight hair? And so it was this constant battle. And as I got older, she finally gave in in junior high school. So growing up, I I didn't appreciate my, my kinks and my curls and whatnot. And it's interesting because when I met my husband, I had straight hair. <laughs> he right. knew me as a, a woman with relaxed hair. We, right. we were young. We were in college. And when I told him five years ago, I was thinking of going natural. He had never seen me with natural hair. His response was just like, uh, so that means you're going to just have an afro? And I said, ah, uh, hey, yeah. <laughs> and he's looking at me all crazy, like, because okay, he's so used to this, right. you know, straight hair and whatnot. And so, you know, he saw the struggle that I was having. I had just given birth. So during the pregnancy, your hair doesn't shed. I mean, it's growing. It doesn't shed. It was gorgeous. But then after I had my daughter, I noticed it started falling out. It was losing its, its luster. It was breaking. It, there was so much going on. I had so much damage, and I lost a lot of my hair. I breastfed for two years, so I lost a lot of it. And I said, you know what? I, I, I think we should just cut it off. And he actually, and I put this on YouTube too, he actually cut my hair off for me. Oh. So I thought he would have an issue with it, and he actually embraced it probably more than I did. Because at uh -huh. first I was just like, oh, I felt like I didn't feel like myself. So, yeah, he embraced it, and I do think that there are a lot of black men who also embraced uh, natural hair. I remember my brother, yeah, I remember my brother telling me, like, he would ask me, why are you straightening your hair? Why don't you just go natural? And back then, I was just like, that was unheard of. I mean, I was in junior high, high school. I was unheard of. And he's like, I don't understand why you're putting all these chemicals in your hair, and he was all about being natural. And I was just like, whatever. And then so many years later, I finally got it. Um, I'm happy that my, my husband does appreciate my hair texture and, and, you know, understood the struggle. He didn't really empathize, but he could surely sympathize with certainly, it. Certainly, certainly. And, and now, you know, my my son loves it. And he's, you know, as a, as a three-year-old, I mean, he doesn't know much, but he is growing up seeing his mom with natural hair. So the whole right. thing that he embraces it just as much. So, yeah, definitely. And, and and you're right. I do see a lot of that. I do see a lot of black women now with their natural hair and the guys that they're with, and they embrace it, too. And I think that's just great. I, and I do. And I, I like what you said about your son. He's just one of the things you're teaching him. So as he yeah. grows and he starts to look for someone he wants to be with her or something, he won't be at least judging it by, well, my, your hair doesn't look like what I'm used to. What he's probably mm -hmm. going to see is all kinds of styles, all kinds exactly. of hair texture. And, and he'll probably, because hopefully none of us are too shallow, he will, <laughs> he will be focusing on her as a person. And the hair brings exactly. a little extra because, you know, I always tell people, I said, yes, we are not about the shallow, but let's face it, we we consider ourselves maybe not beauty queens, but we consider ourselves decent, nice looking, and then we'd like to have someone nice looking also. So I love yeah. what you're teaching him. So, Stacey Ann, I know that you are a busy, a busy lady, and again, I want to thank you for taking time out 
uh, to talk to uh, the Swirl World podcast today in this particular series. But do you have anything special going on that you want to tell us about and something that we can all get on board with? Well, I mean, aside from blogging and really, I, I try to really focus my blog about empowering, empowering women, empowering moms, dads, and how we raise our children. But I'm also working on a, a e-course because I've been approached by people in my industry, bloggers or aspiring bloggers on how to grow their business. And I've been able to put together an e-course where I inform people on how to grow their brand. It's free. I mean, it's something that I'm totally giving away. Um, I'm offering it on my site right now where people can just sign up for the newsletter. And it's about maybe five videos, four or five videos. I'm not sure. I can't. I lost count. Okay. And I'm just basically sharing tips on how to grow your social media following, particularly Twitter, because I struggled with that. I had no idea right. what I was doing on Twitter. Right. And I just implemented these strategies that has helped my Twitter following grow. Um, during the course of like 30 days, I think, my Twitter following jumped immensely. And I guess people assume that, oh, you're on TV, you should have millions and millions of followers, and that's not necessarily the case because there's a strategy behind it. Uh, I also talk about tips on what to include on a website. You know, if you're looking to start a website, what are some of the essentials that you need? So I'm hoping that people will sign up for it, and, and you know, there's a lot that I cover, and I think it's it's a great thing that you can benefit from. Well, you know, since it, it, since it is free, let me, let me delve a little deeper. Could you give us or give uh, our nation an example? Just pull one that you feel is most effective of what they would find on your uh, blog page in regards to helping them to grow, say, their Twitter feed. Could you give us at least an example of one tip? Well, I mean, one of the things that people don't realize that they can do is take advantage of marketing tools. There's so many different kinds out there. So I kind of go over each of them and talk a little bit about the benefits of each. Uh, we all know, like, TweetDeck, I think that was, like, one of the first ones on, like, Hootsuite and things like that. But there are a couple others that I mentioned that I go through that has helped me a lot uh, over the course of – it hasn't even been a year – I'd say over the last few months or so, and I talk a lot about that. Okay, that sounds like it's really good. So one more time, it's called Equipped, or what's it called again? It's the e-course is called How to Grow Your Brand. How to Grow Your Brand, it's divided into four or five different parts, and it leads up to another e-course that I'm working on right now um, on how to book TV appearances. So I'm, uh, that's kind of a preview of the preview. Uh, because that's a, another thing that a lot of bloggers, I go to these conferences, and because I work in TV, they're like, oh, my gosh, how do I get on? <laughs> <laughs> in that course that I'm working on, I'm talking specifically about how to craft a pitch, you know, things to look out for, um, how to get noticed, how to make a lasting impression, uh, how to you know, hair tips and makeup tips and things like that for on air. So it's kind of like what I'm also working on as well. But uh, right now, the How to Grow Your Brand, that's being offered as we speak. Wow, that is great. And especially not only How to Grow Your Brand, but when you get ready to get on TV or something, I know that will explode because most people want to advertise because, you know, it's a big medium. And, you know, if you can do it right, if you have that charisma and you have the ability to get on there, even for a few minutes, it really sells a lot of things. So that's going to be awesome, Stacey Ann. I mean, that is a lot of stuff. That's going to be great information. Yeah. Great information. Yeah, because um, thank you so much because over the, the years, I mean, especially in 10 to 15 years that I've been in the business, in addition to doing the weather, people, a lot of people know me as the weather girl, but I also would produce segments and I book talent and I remember being a feature reporter and I would have to submit a package every week well actually twice a week so I was always looking for talent to book for whatever segment I was working on so if it's like a health segment I'm looking for like a nutritionist if it's a if it's something on how to 
how to get your kids to eat their veggies. I'm looking for a blogger mom or something like that who also specializes in nutrition. And I get her to come on and give a few tips on how to get kids to eat their veggies. So some people don't realize that having a blog is such a great, powerful thing. And another thing I go over is just how to not get lost in the noise and how to take advantage of that SEO and optimize your SEO. That's so important. So I go over all of that. And if you are a blogger or aspiring blogger, or if you are a business person and you're looking to grow your business and you want to push your product, there are ways you can go about it. And I know the internet is like the mecca right now. Everybody is pushing their product online, which is great, but let's not forget about TV and how important that is. And the Today Show, there's Good Morning America, but there's also your local affiliate, the local cable station that's always looking for people to lend their expertise in whatever field it's in. You know what? That is an excellent point. It's something that I guess sometimes we don't think of. We always are so focused on what we see on national TV because that's what most people watch. We don't even think about the local outlets that could be your starting board or, you know, where you could start to build your brand and maybe it would go nas- uh, national. So that's, oh, that's excellent. Actually, I never thought of that. That's a good point. Well, you know what, Stacey, yeah. you are doing all these great things. You are a personality on TV. You're a mom of two. You are a wife. Obviously, you are giving back to the community and helping with your courses and your blog and your Facebook page. So this is an important question for others that are like you. Where and how do you make the time to do all of this? Well, interesting that you asked that question because when I was working full-time, I'm no longer working full-time in the business, but I do work freelance, so I get to control my hours. Now it's a real busy time, so I get called in a lot to work, but in between, I just hash out that time to myself. A lot of it happens when the kids are in school, like now, and I have the day off, or when everybody's asleep. I'm up at like midnight, 2 a.m., and I get things done. And that's probably the easiest because the house is so quiet. Right. So I kind of manage my time that way. But the good thing is, being that I'm not working a 45-hour week anymore, I do have the time. And then if I am working, if I have a lunch break and I want to get something done really quickly, I can. And going back to those marketing tools that I talk about in the course, Mm -hmm. that has been my saving grace. (laughs) Okay. It has. Okay. And it, because it, it just helps me so much. So it helps me manage my time. It helps me automate a lot of things. And it's been working. Well, that's great. It's all about time management. That's great because you, you're you using the products that you are telling people, you know, because it's, it's nothing worse than someone telling you to do something and then they don't do it themselves. So yeah. that's great. Plus, you are a time manager. And there was another young lady that we – did a, pro- a podcast with an excellent um, IT person, and she essentially said the same thing. She had to yeah. block off time where she would just work because now for her it was a business in the sense that she was actually charging fees. So she had to make sure that she had business blocks of time. So she just figured mm-hmm. out how to work it out. But the thing between both of you is time management. You had to determine yeah. how you were going to manage your time in order to get these things done. And obviously, you're doing well. Well, Stacey Ann, one more time for the listeners of uh, our podcast, tell us where we can reach you and find you about the courses that you're offering, your YouTube channel, Facebook page, and blog. (laughs) Give us all of that one more time. (laughs) All right. Well, I am at weatheranchormama.com, and I'm dubbing it my Weather Anchor Mama Academy, (laughs) my e-course is how to grow your brand that's being offered right now. And it's leading up to my how to get books for TV appearances uh, later on. And you can all find that on my blog, weatheranchormama.com. I'm also on Facebook, weatheranchormama. You can also reach me on Instagram under the same name. 
as well as my YouTube channel under the same name, Weather Anchor Mama, and Twitter, Weather Anchor Ma. I couldn't fit all the, I couldn't fit Mama, so it's like Ma. <laughs> That's okay, so, you got you. Definitely. Definitely follow me. And if you have any questions, you know, I'm always there to to help in any which way I can. I do some consulting as well. So uh, definitely, you know, I want to thank you for this opportunity. I, I love what you guys are doing because um, it, it definitely lends expertise and in, in bringing out the beauty in black women. I think sometimes we get, I don't want to say overlooked. Yeah, we get overlooked. Yeah, you can say it. You can get overlooked. It's true. It's true. true. Yeah, it's even tough in my my business. And, you know, so I I try to focus a lot about that as well through blogging and and just through my uh, social media. So um, I want to I want to thank you and definitely appreciate what you're um, giving out to the audience because I think it's definitely needed, especially at a time like now. Absolutely, and thank you so much. We appreciate the compliment and we appreciate your time. So thanks so much, Stacey Ann. Now you have to tell our listeners goodbye. Okay, bye. Thank you so much for having me, and I hope to see you guys soon. I hope to uh, connect with you on social media. All right. Thanks for listening. Make sure to like This World World on Facebook and subscribe to the blog at thisworldworld.com. Head on over to iTunes and subscribe to the podcast or listen directly from our Facebook page. We can also be heard on SoundCloud and Stitcher Radio. The Swirl World. Interracial. Diverse. Beautiful. Beautiful.